Hello everybody, welcome to Happy Petting. Be a volunteer, another great episode in store for us because today we're going to be driving around in Mumbai city rescuing different species. That's right, today's volunteer work will involve different sets of different animals and I'm really looking forward to it because there's going to be a variety and there's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of unexpected volunteer work. So, follow me. Hello. Hi. I'm Keith from Heavy Bedding. I'm Ganesh. Hi Ganesh, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. I actually have heard a lot about you uh, and your organization AMTM. Uh, you call yourself a, a charity, right? It's a charity, it's an NGO. And okay. It's uh, also an NGO? It's also an NGO okay. and it's uh, started in the year 2010. Okay. And uh, the core program would be of feeding. Uh, sterilizations okay. and helping emergency animals in need. Now by sterilization you mean cats and dogs? Stray dogs and stray cats. Okay. And uh, all the people who work for your organization are volunteers, people who love animals? All are pro bono volunteers. What about the, uh, the other species apart from this? We are catering to birds, we are catering to reptiles. Pet animals are taken care of, domestic animals, but not to an extent of calf or cattle. We are not able to do it with this particular equipment out here. This is a beautiful looking van uh, and also it seems to be very well equipped. Uh, tell me a little bit about this. We call it Hospital on Wheels. All right. It is capable of uh, sterilizing more than 40 animals per day. Uh, it is completely equipped with the state-of-the-art equipments where you have an anesthesia machine, you have a multi-parameter, you have an ECG. Wow. It's a complete hospital on wheel concept. Okay. In scenarios where there are accidents or you need a doctor on in emergencies, this vehicle will reach you immediately and all the paramedics will happen on the ambulance itself. You don't have to rush anywhere. You have a vet on board, you have a right. handler on board. Just call our number or you can go onto Facebook or you can go to a Twitter page. Just post so the social, picture. Uh, yeah. You are yeah. active yeah. on your social yeah. media. You just have to post a picture or you go onto a website, post a picture over there and within 45 minutes you have a turnaround time of 45 minutes. Either the volunteer comes and if it's an emergency case, the ambulance reaches you. And, and who gave this to you? We have been working for the past two years and our work was appreciated by Tata Motors. Okay. So Tata Motors gave us this particular whole vehicle in terms of donation. The interior was designed by a, a doctor called Dr. Chavsalkar. Then next came in the designing part of the vehicle which was done by art director Oman Kumar and Vanita. Yeah, it was a beautiful artwork on the, the outside. The whole idea was to color it so bright and nice so that when you look at an ambulance you don't feel depressed. And what are the normal cases that you all encounter? Many a times you have ran over cases continuously, the animals coming yeah. under vehicle. In fact, when you park your car also, half of the time, 50% of the time when your vehicle is parked and you don't know there's an animal sitting below your car, you, just, you, you have to check as per RTO rules anyways, but people don't adhere to it. Oh really? The law in RTOs, please, please make us aware of this. There is a RTO rule, whenever you start your vehicle, you have to see, look down under a vehicle and check whether there's an animal or a human sleeping for all that matter. So basically I'm looking for a lot of volunteer work and uh, I've promised all of you that we're going to do volunteer work with different species. So I hope that I can fulfill that promise. Absolutely. We're going to meet Ankita who is a vet on board. Right. I'm going to introduce to her. This is Ankita. Hey Ankita. Nice to meet you. Hi. And uh, you've been with this uh, organization for a while now? Yeah, from the start. From the start. Okay. So today we're going to do a lot of volunteer work. Right? So let's do that. Yeah. Good luck and uh, wish me luck as well. That's okay. Thank you very much. Before we move, I need to show you something from here. Okay, this way. Come. So yeah, you do uh, rescues for all different sorts of animals, right? Personally, we uh, do not do any kind of snake rescues on our own side. We have snake handlers. Okay. And this is Chetan who's going to help you with... Hi, Chetan. Is that a rat snake? Yeah, it's a rat snake. Okay. And uh, I should bag him first. Why? Is he a little agitated? Yeah. Not his domain. Okay. Go into your bag. And um, so you're the one who actually uh, looks at... We up. work in tandem. Okay. In, in terms of snake rescues, it's always SERP which comes into the picture. SERP right. is an organization which is working with us. Okay. Helps us in rescuing all types of reptiles and snakes, both. Okay. How long does it take for you to get him to the point? Suppose there's a call. These uh, guys are as good as 30 minutes. Turnaround time is 30 minutes. Yeah. So I call you. 
and I say there's a problem. We yes. need uh, there's yes. a snake in our compound. Yes. Thirty minutes, and yes. he is there He's to there. help out. Yes. Okay. Great. Snake? If in case the snake is injured and all, then obviously they go to a veterinary doctor who's going to assist and help if there are injuries. Okay. Post the veterinary check is done, they release them. What are the normal trauma cases? Uh, is it uh, injured because a car's run over them, or attacked by another animal, or a human? The major threat is from the humans. Okay, and many a times it has happened whenever uh, someone has witnessed a uh, uh, counter a snake, hmm. the one first thing they always do is they run around it and try, try to, to kill, kill it. it. Kill yeah. it. They try to kill it. See now for this example, this is a rat snake. It consumes around seventy thousand rats in its whole life. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. That's a lot. And if you, you and if you kill one rat snake, you can understand what kind of threat we are causing to us. To ourselves. Ourselves. That's actually a very important point. One rat snake eats seventy thousand rats in its lifetime. Kill 10 of them and there's 7 lakh rats in around your compound. You really don't want to do that. That's your friend there. That's your friend in the bag. So I think you said that he's agitated. Are you going to yeah. be releasing him back into where he should be? Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, snakes are protected, aren't they? Uh, by Indian law. Yes. So remember, Indian laws protect snakes and they protect a lot of other species. So let's find out about snakes and how they are protected by Indian law. According to the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, Injuring or destroying wild birds or reptiles or disturbing the eggs or nests of such birds or reptiles is punishable by law. So where are we headed now? Kandibli. And we're going to meet a lady over there who takes care of kittens and dogs both. And she's been working with us for almost two years now. Uh, very good support in terms of uh, animals which are in really bad shape. Hi, I'm Keith from Heavy I'm Petting. Natasha. Nice to meet you, Natasha. Same here. Uh, Natasha, I heard that you need some help with uh, some of your animals and yeah. some shots and all yeah, that. So, so we want to do that. Okay. Uh, so can we do this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can we take the van inside? Yeah, yeah. Come. Yeah. Well, Natasha looks after all these animals, so she's going to sort them out and decide which animal needs what, so we can bring them down and, of course, get them treated. But if you have any problems of your own in your own house with your pets, it's very simple. Write into us, and Dr. Mesh will take care of all your problems. Welcome to the Ask a Dog section. This is Dr. Umesh. Anish Pillai from Kerala has a query on his pet. What are common internal parasites in dogs? How can they be controlled? Anish, okay, the dogs can develop the all kinds of internal worms. That includes roundworms, whipworms, whipworms, heartworms, and including some of the protozoan parasites. However, some worms like the lungworms or the heartworms are not so common in our country. The intestinal parasites can cause a lot of problems in a growing puppies. It may cause anemia, it may cause a loss of proteins, it may cause a dehydration because of the loose motion and some of them may not grow at all resulting in a malnutrition. So controlling these parasites is very very important. So puppies and dogs can develop the infection by contamination or when they are in the womb through the placenta or through the milk and some parasites can also penetrate through the skin. In addition, some of these parasites can be of a zoonotic importance that can be transmitted to any of the family members. So it's extremely important that you control the parasites not only in the dogs and also in the environment. So follow the, all the good hygiene practice at home and make sure that you dispose all the waste and clean your hands every time you get contaminated with the feces. Regular deworming of puppies and adult dogs is extremely important. So normally the vet can suggest the deworming for the puppies every two weeks until they reach the age of six months. Following this, you may deworm the dog every three to six months or as per your advice from the veterinarian. Okay, um, kya karana inko? Uh, it's for routine checkup and it's for anti-rabies. It's for anti-rabies, it's for general checkup. Okay, Tashu, let's go up. Come on, child. Come here. 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 Come here.
Okay. Hi, Doc. Hi. Okay, this is Tashu. Tashu needs to uh, get a general checkup done. So, what are you looking for, doctor, when you look at a general checkup? Basically, check I'll see if he's got any base infections like ear infection, eye, his skin coat. If you're coming for a normal checkup, you look for all these, you know, like his, his body be temperature. Nice. Yeah. It should be normal body temperature, his heart rate and all of that. Tashu seems quite excited, so if there's a few extra beats in there, don't worry. That's because he's seen me. Aja Tashu. Okay. He's all fit. He's fine. Skin coat is also better. Skin coat is good? Yeah. Yes, Tashu, your skin coat is good. Say bye to the doctor, Tashu. Bye, doctor. Okay. Get in the second one now. Good boy. Ah. Okay, bacha. Okay, so he needs to get a, a rabies shot, Doc. I think he had an accident, so he's got a bit of a damage in his foot also, but just a rabies shot for the moment. Now, while Dr. Ankita prepares to get the rabies shot for our little friend here, uh, we're going to ask you about last week's contest question, and the question was this, do penguins convert salt water to fresh water? Tell me how many of you got it right, but... I think we were about to find out. I don't think penguins can do that unless they have some machinery fit inside them. I'm pretty sure they can't. I... Uh, oh, I don't know. I never heard about that. Penguins are... I don't know. Penguins, I don't think they can convert any water. Oh. I think they can because how, how do they oh, survive in the sea otherwise, right? <laughs> penguins can convert salt water into fresh water if they urinate a lot. The correct answer is A, yes. Penguins can convert salt water into fresh water with the help of a filtration gland called supraorbital gland located right above the eyes. This gland functions much like the kidneys filtering impurities but in this case removes salt from bloodstream. Once the gland is full of salt, penguins knock their beaks on a rock to empty the salt out. Good boy, good boy. Okay, time now to give you this week's contest question. And this week, your question is this. Do starfish have brains? Do they? Your options are A, yes, B, no, or C, only once they reach adulthood. SMS your answer A, B or C and send it to 56388. There are pedigree gifts waiting for your pet. So Doc, uh, when you're giving a, a, a feline an anti rabies shot, are there any things that you look out for to be careful of? Or? Yeah, usually they scratch a lot okay. and they bite as well. And they bite as well. Okay. Hi kitty, don't worry. So that's how you hold the cat from yeah. the scruff of the neck? So from the scruff of the neck, yeah. She's done? Yeah. Okay, cool. Boom boom bun diddy. A doom dum day. A doom dum day. No, 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 no. Boom bun diddy. A doom dum day. A doom dum day. No, 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 no. We're going to be driving for another 30 minutes and we are going to go to a place where we're going to release some birds which we have taken from uh, captivity, convincing people around by saying that they belong to the skies and they have handed over those birds, so we are going to go and release those birds. Hi, I'm Keith from Heavy Petting. I'm Sushant from EMTM, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you indeed. Okay, basically Sushant, we are here because we want to be a volunteer mm -hmm. and uh, any way that I can help, please send me. I have a few birds in my car, we would like your help to have them checked by Dr. Ankita and then have them released. So there's a vet and you yes. want me to take the birds yes. there? Come, yes, let's do it. Let's go. Come.
guys buy it? Yeah, they do. Okay. You need not remove them completely outside. Okay. Because there are chances that they might just fly. Fly off, yeah. Okay, so what do you, what do you check for? Usually check their wings. Okay. If the wings are not damaged or they're injured. Right. Basically, that's what we do. And this one seems to be fine, right? Yeah, this one seems to be fine. Okay. And then, you are well. Alright, it's time for your Tales and Tales contest while we go out and release the birds. It's time to find out who is on our story for this week. This week's winner is Apurva Vadwan from Delhi who tells us about her sprightly little pug, Watka. Apurva says, One day I was eating chocolate and Watka suddenly woke up from his sleep, pounced on me and started licking my chocolate. Soon after, he sat back quietly knowing that the chocolate was his possession now. From then on, my chocolate is incomplete without him. But Apurva, here's a warning, chocolates are not for canines. Apurva goes on to say that Watka is extremely possessive about me. So much so that when I was busy studying for my exams, he came and perched on my books so that I could do nothing better than cuddle him. If you have an anecdote about your pet or videos that show us a story, log on to NDTV Good Times on Facebook and take part in our Tales and Tales contest. We are waiting. All right, first bird to go. You're free, buddy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, second guy. Bye bye. Well, two down. This is the third guy, but we released. What a wonderful day we've had here on Heavy Petting Be a Volunteer. And this is the next generation of bird and animal rescue. A moving hospital that takes it to the scene and rescues the animals and treats them on the spot. They've got everything, all the technology built in, and this is how they use it. We're so happy to be part of this great experience. So thank you, everybody, for joining us here on Heavy Petting Be a Volunteer. Until next time, this is Keith saying, keep petting, keep it heavy and be safe with all your rescue work. Bye bye for now. I can see your camera. Yeah. Okay, ready? We're rolling. Thoda safety. Thoda, bus, bus, bus. Huh. Rolling. Hello everybody and welcome to a spectacular episode. And action. <laughs>